Hey, let's go, my friends, and welcome back to the channel. So, in this series, we are going to be looking at Royfield Models Easy 8 Sherman. Now, in this video in particular, we'll be looking at the build from start to finish. The next episodes, I'd like to be doing the uh, painting and weathering. And in the last episode, I plan to do a small vignette for this kit. So hopefully you'll stick around for the entirety of this series. Um, I'm hoping you're going to enjoy it. So far, the build has been great and you'll see that in this video. So stick around to the end and I'll show you some finished uh, photos of the model as it's built. So in this video, I says I'm going to show you from start to finish uh, pretty much of this kit. It has some amazing detail. Uh, if you remember from the Ag Panther uh, series I did, it had some amazing detail and the fit was really good. And unsurprisingly, this one is exactly the same. There's some amazing cast texture uh, detail on the hull and on the turret. In the video, I'll actually also show you um, how to do cast texture in yourself uh, because of a seam line that we have to try and uh, remove around the turret loses some of that uh, detail it's really simple and really easy uh, to do so as i'll show you that in the video the kit has workable tracks and suspension as well which will make uh you know for real nice if you're doing a uh, vignette or diorama in sort of like out in the field if you like uh, so those tracks and suspension will conform to an uneasy um surface uh, groundwork or whatever you want to do um, so obviously that will make for quite a nice dramatic uh, little scene so without me babbling on too much further grab yourself a good brew and a bicky as always and let's jump straight into the video so let's have a quick look at the instructions now they are really nicely laid out as you can see on that first page there gives you all your parts call out and just quite simply it's an easy follow uh, instruction manual uh, it's very much the same as the Yag Panther I did um, it shows you exactly where all the parts need to go and you know giving you the choice of replacement of the original plastic part to uh, the photo etch part now in some cases the photo etch part is better and in other cases sometimes the plastic part is a little bit better you also get your color call outs and markings you only get two basically so these uh, black and uh, olive drab and the olive drab standard we also get some of the poly caps and some string for the uh, towing cable and the poly caps obviously for the uh, like running gear and also some decals which i'm not going to be using uh, within this kit and as you can see there the photo etch as well and finally we've got the clear parts as you can see the periscopes a couple of headlights which we, again we won't be using in this and a couple of light vision slits that go around the cupola now let's have a quick look at some of the parts again just like the egg panther they are really really nicely molded the caster texture caster caster texture the cast texture is also really good you've also got uh, the casting numbers in there as well which is a really really nice add and again those smaller details are really nice single uh, barrel with a very small amount of uh, a seam line to remove there which i don't think is going to be all that much of a problem to remove Again, the MG is also quite nicely uh, detailed. Again, a little bit of seam line uh, around there, uh, but again, I don't think it's anything gonna be too much of an issue to remove. We also got some of the tools there and uh, some of the ammo boxes. Again, really, really nicely uh, tooled and detailed. Um, getting some jerry cans there for a bit of stowage. I'm gonna also add a little bit of my own uh, stowage to the model as well. The upper hull as well, extremely nicely detailed, some also really nice uh, weld uh, seams there as well, some good cast texture. Uh, I will actually uh, redo this, um, not that it actually needs it, but I want to do a bit of cast texturing, um, so I thought I might as well. I'm going to probably have to do some around the touch, I'll explain a bit, but again you can see those uh, cast numbers there, also really nicely uh, predominant there, uh, and again just 
really nice. You wouldn't really have to do much uh, to this model, really. Uh, you can quite easily make out the box. Again, around the turret is also quite nicely textured, but the two parts that are going to have to go together, so we'll have to try and remove that seam line. So I'm going to have to cast texture it anyway. So, yeah, a good opportunity to do. The tracks are, as you can tell, all individual links and there's quite a lot of parts to make up a small section so that's going to be a hell of a lot of fun to do but they do give you some little jigs there to help you put these tracks together which is a nice uh, little kind of adds uh, to the model really um, and it's going to make things a little bit smoother uh, in putting these links together so I hadn't actually noticed straight away, but there is this very faint uh, sort of seam line that runs, actually it's a bit stronger around the back. Um, so again, we're gonna have to texture this uh, anyway, because even being as delicate as possible, removing that, I think I'm still gonna be removing quite a bit of that texture. Now, I may have been able to use uh, some Tamiya Extra Thin to try and uh, sort of smoothen that out and keeping the texture, but I just don't think it was going to really work out. So again, cast texture is going to be the answer. And again, you can see there with that seam line, there is no way I'm going to clear that without destroying that detail. So my initial attempt had failed uh, at trying to remove this. I actually just tried to quite simply use uh, some time we actually thin. And unfortunately, the brush I'd used had actually got some pigment on this. That's why it's gone black. Uh, this didn't work, so I was going to use, to be fair, what I knew was the tried and tested uh, method of cast texturing, and that's just using some modeling putty. All we really need to do, it's really simple, easy to do, uh, is obviously get some uh, putty, doesn't really matter which, and just using, I'm actually using here some uh, Tamiya Thin, and I'm just going to mix basically the glue with the putty and it will make this really thin gooey pasty thing uh, and then all we need to do is quite simply just apply it to the model and start stippling now we did also use this sort of stubby type brush to again help with some of that texturing and this as you can see had started to clear that seam up uh, but looking at some reference photos I realized I actually still needed to put that seam line in because it actually is part of the uh, welding of the two turrets so all I did was uh, manipulate some slightly thicker but still again uh, mixed in glue uh, with the putty and made some sort of like little sausages uh, and just manipulated that into around the seam line and again blended it in a little bit with a bit of glue and then after I let it dry I gave it a quick uh, light sanding to get rid of any overly uh, rough pieces of uh, putty because uh, again we don't want those it is a relatively smoothly uh, cast texture on there so again giving it a light sanding uh, just to remove any really coarse bits and as you can see here this is kind of where I wanted it to look uh, again it gives you that nice cast texture a lot better when it's uh, painted but again it's kind of uh, a sort of soft um, texture in there it's not uh, too coarse or rough now once that was out of the way I could start working on some of the smaller parts um, like the uh, sort of uh, vision slits uh, I did actually put a bit of uh, Molotov chrome uh, pen on the back um, so I'm hoping once I've uh, masked the front off and removed that gives a little bit of uh, reflection there. Also got these little kind of like uh, lids that go over the top of uh, the periscope, uh, which I, I'm going to assume because I'm not very good with tanks that. Obviously you can retract the uh, periscope and gives you a nice sort of still bit of solid armour over the top of it. So here there's kind of like a bit of a cage that goes uh, over the top of these. There was a option to use uh, photo etch on here, but I didn't like it. Uh, I actually thought the plastic part uh, was substantially better detailed. You can see at the bottom there, it's kind of like the mounting bolts uh, for that little frame to fit over the top of it. And just far more better that I felt than, again, like I said, the photo etch. 
Now there is quite a substantial amount of small parts and are very difficult uh, to clean up as you can see like this. Uh, now the top was quite easy to use uh, the back edge of the knife to remove but as you get further down the bottom you can see a lot of them sort of ribby bits because I have no idea what this thing is. Um, it's quite easy to use some uh, Tamiya Extra Thin. Just use the brush applicator uh, over the top of it and just, just smooth it out and it will remove uh, you know those uh, seams there. Basically it just, just melts the plastic in into itself and gives you a nice uh, sort of smooth and seamless look. So for the rest of the small bits that go on uh, the top of the turret are uh, really simple and easy to put together. So I sped all this up because nothing really interesting happened. Um, again, majority of this build is actually quite uh, nice and simple with very few little issues. Now you do get two um, options here when you come into around the uh, turret and mantlet area. You can either have this uh, shroud that goes over the top, which is, to be fair, was actually the most awkward pit, bit uh, about the build apart from the tracks. Um, yeah, it's just, you've got the choice of either having uh, this sort of shroud that goes uh, around the mantlet or not, um, simple as that. Um, I did actually use um, the wrong mantlet uh, piece uh, for this. There was another one that was in the kit that kind of had uh, some edging around it. Um, I, I just wasn't paying attention to the instructions. <laughs> uh, so that bit's uh, not right. But again, this all fits together uh, relatively easy. The only issue with having this shroud uh, over the top, it means that the, uh, uh, the barrel or the gun barrel is uh, not positionable. Um, so it'll be stuck in a horizontal uh, position so you can't have it uh, to be able to go up or down or have it locked into place. Now going on to the barrel we've got a few small brass parts that aren't really seen um, that go in the uh, or around the muzzle brake. This was probably again apart from the tracks um, probably any of the other complicated bits because it's small and fiddly but as you can see this is them brass parts there you don't really see them so I'm not really sure why they really bothered uh, to put them in. I'm also not sure why I bothered doing it because if it had dry fitted it I could have realised I didn't need to bother doing it but you know it's probably the only bit I actually followed the instructions properly. The MG that sits at the top was again relatively easy but a little bit fiddly because we've got the cocking handle there that needs to try and go on. We've also got the uh, top of the breech that needs uh, gluing into place. I also drilled out the uh, gun sight because it was a solid piece. Um, kind of overdid it and made it a bit too weak. Uh, but again, it's quite a simple uh, part to make. Uh, and again, small seam, uh, seam line cleanup uh, to do there. But again, nothing you know, major uh, to deal with. You get a nice little option uh, with the ammo box where you can have the uh, belt feed going into the weapon or you can have the ammo tin closed up. I decided on this one to have a closed uh, ammo tin uh, on this because uh, I'm not really, so I'm not having any figures with it and I didn't really, for some reason, to want to have it look like it was uh, ready to use. The lower hole was made up of five parts um, and was very nicely uh, designed and built. Uh, it's got really decent locator positions and it, once it's all put together, even dry fitted, goes together really nice and square. The front uh, armor plate, which I know has got a very specific name on these, which I've forgotten, um, is made up of basically uh, three parts. Uh, you kind of got the uh, drive axle if you like for the uh, sprockets um, which again are made up of a couple of parts nicely detailed most of which you ain't going to see um, and again really nice cast texture and the cast texture numbers there as well all slots together really really nicely and as you can see this is the only tight little fit to, to get it around the hole and that um, sort of brace in there to have the kind of wooden plank that runs across the front of the vehicle Side skirts to go on, again, 
Uh, nice locator positions, there's a nice faint line to make sure that that skirt runs all the way uh, down the side of the tank because it's a singular uh, piece. There is these like little faint, faint uh, locator marks you may be able to just about see there, uh, which makes it a lot easier to level that side skirt up. Now for the front fenders, I wanted to make them look a little bit beaten up and I didn't want to get a photo edit set for this because I just wanted to pretty much build it from the kit with very little extras. It's really easy and simple to do. Um, it's a lot easier actually if you've got a, a rotary tool uh, to do this. And as you can see, all I need to do is just remove a extremely large uh, amount of uh, material there. Um, Basically, all you need to do is remove as much material as possible uh, and thin it out, but keep uh, continuously check it up against uh, a light. And when it gets to the point uh, where it's basically starting to come really opaque and starting to see the light come through, that's where you need to stop. Then it makes it a lot easier to uh, manipulate uh, the plastic and you know to give you chance of basically making it uh, more worn uh, and battered as you can see I'm just using a pair of uh, jewelry uh, pliers here because because the rounded off edges uh, if you use the square pliers I felt like I was going to make them too sort of perfect um, as you can just see just bend the plastic twist it about and again it gives you that more of a kind of realistic look of you know these fenders being beaten The coaxial gun itself, again, like most of the model, is really uh, nicely detailed. Uh, I did actually drill uh, the gun uh, barrel out. Um, it's probably the only sort of detail that's not really in there is having kind of like a remotely hollowed uh, barrel. Uh, just used a small uh, hand drill bit there just to uh, remove the center to make it lock an open barrel. As we move on adding parts to the hull, we've got the uh, engine deck. Now you can actually have the option of having uh, the sort of like engine vents uh, open. Um, I'm assuming this kit is identical to the kit that they used um, for the full interior uh, version of this, which I was very considering getting. Um, maybe that's uh, another project for another time. Uh, but you know, you can kind of tell uh, with certain parts um, that it should be part of the uh, full interior kit. I also drilled out a couple of holes uh, around the fill cap areas, uh, which obviously are going to be for the uh, any sort of fuel spill or fuel uh, runoff to be able to sort of escape uh, away um, from the fuel cap area. Now here I use the photo etch parts provided for the rear uh, light covers and I used the original uh, plastic part which was a little bit too thick really uh, but I used that uh, to basically manipulate the brass uh, part uh, around that to give it the right shape and then it was quite simply uh, glued into place. Now what you can also do uh, with brass parts is you can use a lighter to, to anneal them a little bit um, you need to be very careful um, you need to do it so it goes just slightly blue and then that actually makes it a little bit easier to manipulate these parts and here you can see a side by side comparison of the original part and the brass part here I'm adding the sort of like bracing parts uh, for the side skirt and you can also see that I've removed uh, where the external um, spare tracks are because I didn't want those uh, on the vehicle. And again, I've also manipulated some of that plastic uh, on the side skirt to again simulate a bit of uh, wear and tear. And here we're just adding um, obviously some of the small parts like the uh, tools, which normally I would paint separately, but I've decided for some reason to um, make it a little bit more 
difficult for myself because again i like painting things very departmental um so i'm gonna have fun trying to paint these on the vehicle because it's not something i like doing the uh rear uh, part as you can see the sledgehammer which i will remove later on because it's going to make it a little bit easier to uh, add the stowage and keep it nice and flat now speaking of stowage um, we've got this technical term here flappy bit uh, at the back which um, uh, also has the uh, gun barrel uh, clean cleaning rods uh, that sits on the back and we can have this part uh, basically uh, up or down because uh, it doubles up as a sort of uh, stowage shelf um, which I'll have it in the um, sort of down position so I can add the stowage onto there. It also has a couple of nice little uh, butterfly um, sort of nuts uh, on there as well as a couple of uh, the bracing struts to, to hold the um, that shelf into place. Now keeping to the back end of the vehicle, I know I'm sort of jumping around a little bit here, um, but we've got uh, some of the exhaust venting here. And again, I wanted to make these look a little bit more uh, worn. So I'm using a uh, sculpting tool just to sort of bend those uh, slats out a little bit, just to make them look like being uh, beaten up by, you know, thrown debris uh, from the rear of the tracks. And there you can see all that fitted into place. We've also got uh, a couple of towing uh, sort of hooks there at the rear as well. And the last thing to add on the lower hull is the gun barrel uh, retainer. As you can see, I've put the uh, shreds over the headlights, which again, I've used the brass parts for. And we've also got the sort of like uh, lifting hooks for the tank. Now we'll move on to the uh, suspension units. Um, there's quite a few parts to these um, because basically what they've, they've done is to be able to make all the running gear and the tracks all flexible so you can put it onto a uneven uh, base and give it that impression it's going over um, some rough terrain rather than sort of solid links which will you know obviously won't give that effect and you've got to try and bury the tracks in a little bit or have it on an extremely flat base and of course you've got to be very careful where you put your glue because again you want to keep this um, all as flexible as possible the wheels are also quite simple they've just got a bar and just peg them on both ends uh, i have left them uh, removable for the time being because again it's going to be make it a lot easier to paint the wheels uh, later on but i've just left them on to sort of show you um, how this uh, assembly looks once it's all done So this was the bit I was dreading the most uh, about this kit. To make six sections of links, uh, you need all this. Uh, it's quite a bit. Now, they do give this nice handy little jig um, to put uh, the tracks together. As you can see, it gives the right orientation for the track pads. And then you put those into place, put the uh, bars in, the back pads over the top, and then the... Uh, guide horns uh, are down the center they're also giving you a top piece to clamp the two together which i didn't really use in the end because i didn't really feel like it really helped uh, all that much but the most difficult part is um, gluing it together now as you can see there's the in the in the centers there was these little uh, sort of recessed studs um so what i found was using a uh, me little super glue wire and using some uh, just simple I actually use Revell contact cement for it because it gave me a bit of a slightly longer uh, drying time and just put those into the center and push them uh, push them down into place and for the most part that helped and kept them um, keep the tracks uh, flexible I also forgot to mention you need at least I think it's 75 links per side so yeah it took a while as you can see what I've done here is I've used uh, the main uh, jig part here, put two of the tracks, uh, the lower half of the track in, and then put the two uh, sections of link together and just put the top pads on 
you can glue them exactly the same and that I found was the easiest way of uh, basically linking all the sections up and as you can see we've got uh, fully workable plastic tracks so next I'm going to show you how I created these shell impacts now what you're going to want is a selection of drill bits uh, to sort of emulate different uh, shell sizes and what I'm going to do is I'm going to map out the areas that I want to have these impacts on and quite simply just mark them out and this is map them out uh, with a pencil. I also seem to find that swaying the pencil around in random circular motions all over the place not doing anything seemed to help me place all these shell impact craters. Once I was happy with the location of the shell impacts, I started off with uh, just putting a little pilot hole in. I used an old uh, airbrush needle for this, and this is going to give us a good starting point for the drill bit. So now this next part you can actually use a rotary tool for if you wanted to, but what I'd suggest, and particularly if it's the first time you uh, doing this sort of thing, is using a hand uh, drill because this is going to give you a little bit more uh, control on the sort of depth that you want to have these impact craters at. Now these ones on the side of the turret I drilled the initial sort of pilot hole relatively shallow and then went in a little bit of an angle and then afterwards coming in with a uh, blade and just cutting a few gouges out and then we'll go over this again a little bit with the um, hand drill just to sort of smoothen those edges out a little bit more and once I've done all that I'll then clean everything up with a bit of Tamiya Extra Thin to uh, you know basically clean up the uh, rough edges that I hadn't already cleaned up and just get any rid of any sort of swath uh, that was left. Now for any sort of shell impacts that you want to have uh, on a corner, which I have two, I'm going to have one on the main hull as well. Again, I just put a little bit of a pilot hole in uh, with the drill bit and then just, again, with the hobby blade, cut a bit of a chunk out and then clean that up again afterwards with some Tamiya Extra Thin. I also to add a little bit more uh, interest, uh, like this one on the side, I've had it uh, clip that uh, bracing bracket for the side skirt. Again, to try and make a bit more interest, I've also added a couple of glancing blows down the side as well. Now for the impact craters themselves, it's really easily done. Using some uh, modeling putty and just adding a little dab, you don't need a lot. And with the back end of a paintbrush, obviously preferably a rounded off one, and just force it into that uh, hole that we made uh, with the drill bit and forcing that putty out and this will give us that impression of the you know the metal being heated up on impact and you know melting it and give us those sharp edges that the impact of the shell would make for the glancing blows pretty much the same um, I had a little bit more putty here because I wasn't quite sure how this was going to go and again using the paintbrush I used the side of it this time mostly and uh, sort of force that uh, around giving it sort of a you know twisty motion to get it to you know spread it about a bit um, any excess um, just use a blade just to pick away at that excess if you feel like it's too much um, or quite easily you can just take it all out and, and do it again until you get something that you're happy with and there you go, as you can see, some, I think, very uh, convincing shell impacts. Moving on to some of the smaller details, I've added uh, some uh, antennas just using some copper wire. I had to make a couple of collars uh, for this, as I, when I drilled them out, I ruined the original ones. Just used some styrene rod, again drilled out. Uh, to roughly around about the right size and then I would later on I will super glue them in for the time being I'm going to keep them removable and for the final bits he's added some stowage now I've used a piece of balsa wood for the plank that would run across the front and what I'm doing now is just placing some bits of stowage in 
uh, very loosely just to see on how it's going to look. Uh, what I will then do is, when I'm happy with the position of everything, I will take a load of photos of the positioning. Uh, so when I paint all these individually, I know where I want them to go uh, in the end. I've used some green stuff for some sort of like roll mats or like, uh, you know, sleeping bags or, you know, um, tarps or blankets rolled up. Um, the tarp I've used in the back here I'll, I'll actually remove later on because I wasn't uh, overly happy with it when, uh, when I was uh, ready to start painting. So the jerry cans now with boxes with the any part stowage with the kit, the oil cans, drums and the wine bottles are for mini art and the resin uh, crates are from Red Dog. And with the stowage in place, that's the build complete. So there we go my friends, that's the build so far. I hope you have uh, enjoyed it. I have really enjoyed this uh, build so far. It's an absolutely amazing kit. If it's something that you're considering buying and if you hadn't done so already before uh, and you may do now, Honestly, it's worth getting the kit. It's an absolutely amazing kit. As you can see, it's amazingly uh, well detailed. And it just goes together really, really nicely. Yet, the tracks are a bit of a pain. They're a lot of work. But in the end, to have workable tracks, I think it's actually, you know, it's really, it is good. Um, but it, it is quite a bit of work, uh, admittedly. But at the end of it, it looks great. In my opinion, I think it's amazing. This is an amazing kit. So, again, if it is something you're considering, yes, get it. It is brilliant. Can't praise it enough, as you can tell. <laughs> so, if you have done, uh, if you have enjoyed the video uh, so far and you'd like to see more, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Obviously, put bell notifications to tell you when the next video is available, which is going to be says, the weathering. Um, it's also be the first time I'll be doing shell impact uh, damage, so stick around for that and see how that turns out. Uh, but yeah, guys, again, thank you ever so much uh, for watching. Again, I hope you have uh, enjoyed the video, and here's the finished shots of the model so far.